Hi everyone, I'm Flora Pastorero. And I'm Carrie Perry, and this is Chick to Chick. Today's podcast, we are dealing with a very serious subject. It's not something that we want to talk about, but it's something that we have to talk about. And we have a motivation. We're talking about suicide and we're hoping that our message today will save lives. And that's why we're talking about this today. Absolutely. And Flora, you and I had the privilege of meeting someone who really has a tremendous story to tell. His name is Kevin Hines. And he was going through, obviously, a very difficult time in his life. He made a decision to go to the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco and jump. But he'll tell you that when he jumped, he recognized that he didn't want to die. So Whatever that power was that saved his life, he has now taken on this, mis- this, this message of hope, of survivorship, of life and being in it. And he is on a mission. He is on a mission. He's going around the country telling people why they shouldn't do it and why your life matters. And I just want to share a few statistics because this is a problem. Mm-hmm. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for 15 to 24 year olds every day, 123 Americans will die by suicide. That's one suicide every 12 minutes. And this is really alarming, right? Around the world, nearly 800,000 people, nearly 800,000 people around the world will take their own life every year. And that's one suicide every 40 seconds. The statistics are alarming and it emphasizes the point of how big of a problem this is. Mm -hmm. And this is why Kevin Hines is now traveling the country to tell his story. Are you okay? Is something wrong or can I help you? Those were the words that I desperately wanted to hear right before I catapulted myself over the rail. At 17 and a half years of age, I was dealing with bipolar disorder, type one with psychotic features, living with severe depression, anxiety, heightened manic episodes, and crashing into these dark abysses of depression. By 19 years of age, the depression had turned itself into suicidal ideation and thinking. And at 19, I did go to the Golden Gate Bridge. I attempted to die by my hands from lethal emotional pain by jumping from that bridge. 99% of those who ever attempted to jump off the Golden Gate have, have died. They never get to tell their stories. And so it came from this, this one place of wanting to help people on a, on a stage. There's something we have to do. Where I first had my mental breakdown I was actually on a stage at Archbishop Reardon High School. I, I, I had a complete paranoid delusion. That's, that was the impetus to my, my downfall. And I've gone into nine different psych ward stays between then and now. Uh, I've attempted to take my life more than once. And I'm so grateful that I get to exist or be anywhere. Given those clergymen who wanted me to be a part of this change, they helped me see my true vision to try to show people all over the world that suicide did not have to be an option, that, that, it, that, that they didn't have to die with their hands. We're all mortal. We're all going to die someday. If we could just give ourselves time, effort, and hard work to change mentally, we can live good lives, productive lives, hopeful lives. And when you find hope, you find purpose. And if you find purpose, you can stay here. Our motto at the Kevin and Margaret Hines Foundation is be here tomorrow and every day after that. And that is what we embody every single video we put on youtube.com slash Kevin Hines. These videos that are designed to affect and transform people's mindsets that they do deserve this life until their natural end. Why did you think suicide was the answer? What did you think that would accomplish? It wasn't about accomplishing anything. In my great depression, in the severity of my pain, uh, well, let me ask you a question, actually. When you find yourself in excruciating physical pain, what do you want that pain to do? You want it to end. You want it to end. Imagine that physical pain, 300,000 times worse, 24 hours a day. That's what I embody, brain pain. The enemy I battle within, as I still live with suicidal thoughts, I still live with depressions and paranoias, 
manic heights that drive my family wild, and I still crash into these dark abysses of pain and depression. All of the above, plus the paranoid delusions and the hallucinations, auditory and visual, could be enough to, 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 to mind bend anyone. I have learned the tools to stabilize, and that's what, that's what part of this media does. We share media that helps others use those tools, implement them into their lives, and then make their lives better. So you were on the bridge. You get on the bridge, and what were your thoughts as you... It's the single worst moment of my entire life. I was compelled to die. I did not want to. I was hearing voices in my head saying that I had to die. Those are categorically different things than wanting to die. And I've been in both situations. Uh, two years ago, I developed a skin disease, uh, second degree burns from the bottom of my feet to the top of my head, caused not by a fire, but caused by a, a, a medical burn. It was on the tipping point of what's called Stevens-Johnson syndrome. I broke past that, but that was 30 weeks of excruciating pain that would bring me to my knees and make me cry all day long. In that point, I wanted to die. I wanted to end my life in the physical pain I was going through, but I didn't. I live by a motto. If I'm suicidal, I turn to the person in front of me or to the right of me or to near me and I say four simple but effective words. I need help now. And if I asked you that, what would you, what would you do? Would you help me? Of course. of course you would, and so would the cameraman, and so would everybody else, because human beings genuinely care. We are, we are fearing reaching out to people in pain. We're fearing reaching out to people who don't show their pain. What we must do is not wait for people like me who are, who are suicidal and sometimes to reach out to you. We must reach in. We must be the ones that say no more will we wait idly by for someone to tell me we're suicidal. I'm going to go ask everybody I know, just because at the, at the off chance, one out of five is. I've caught them and we can get them to safety. So you jumped off the bridge and then what were you thinking? At that time, I didn't know on the bridge that my thoughts did not have to become my actions. My thoughts did not have to own, rule, or define what I did next. I wish on the bridge that I turned to the person next to me and said, I need help now. Now I know the tools. Now I know what to do. Now I know that if the first person I turn to says, I can't help you, buddy, and if the second person I turn to says, I can't help you, buddy, and even if the third and fourth and fifth says, I can't help you, buddy, I'm gonna keep fighting and finding someone who's willing to help. But I'm lucky. I've built a support network of people around me that are willing to say, I got your back right now and sit with me in that moment. And that doesn't mean they're gonna ship me off to a psych ward right away. That means they're gonna sit with me and they're gonna say, hey Kevin, what can we do for you right now? What are you going through? How can we help you guide you to a place that's more safe? That we, so that we know in the next 24 hours, you're not gonna try to take your life. And that's what this, nights like this is all about. Educating a community as a whole, the different tools, signs, symptoms, triggers that are going on in, the, in the, their loved ones, but also what are the tools that are tangible that we can take away tonight that can, we can give back to this audience so that I'm not just coming here with a bunch of rhetoric. I actually give you actionable resources to take home, utilize, and go do good work to help change your brain life and your wellness and your well-being. You said you sustained great injuries. What were your injuries? I shattered my T12, L1, L2 lower vertebrae into shards. Uh, when they popped, they splintered throughout my insides. I missed severing my sp spinal cord that day by two millimeters. And how long was your recovery from that? It's been, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm still in recovery from that. I'm in chronic back pain. Uh, I, have, I have a metal plate, metal cage, and metal wiring that holds it all together. The only reason I can stand. The cartilage above the metal plate in placement and the cartilage below is crushing itself. So I'm gonna to have to get some new treatments pretty soon or else I will uh, most likely be in a, 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 either a world of pain or B, not be able to walk. Do you think about that all the time? Do you think about that day? No, I think about it in the sense that I'm trying to, to, to tell my narrative so that other people can stay here. In that sense, I think about it a lot, but I don't think about it. I, I have complete closure from the Golden Gate Bridge complete closure. Matter of fact, my father took me to the Golden Gate uh, the year after my attempt, a, a, date, a date to the year after my attempt. So September 25th, 2001, he took me there. At the time of my attempt, he took me, he, we, we picked a purple flower with yellow inside. And we said in our father, and we dropped the flower over the rail right where I had attempted. And wafted down and made the tiniest ripple effects, which is what the, we called our movie Suicide, the ripple effect, the documentary we made, to the right popped up a sea lion. And that is imperative because in the, in the story in which, in which I jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge, 
and I survived. It was a sea lion that kept me afloat until the Coast Guard boat arrived behind me. So the fact that this sea lion, a year later, pops up two feet to the right of the flower, uh, it was the most, the single most beautiful moment I've ever spent with my dad my entire life, next to him being the best man at my wedding. So many kids are in pain these days. Yeah. So many kids, and suicide is on the rise. What do you want to say to these kids who can are I, thinking about this? Can I look directly in the camera at them? Yeah, of course. To my friends and my family out there who are hurting mentally, who are devastated by suicidal ideations and constant thoughts of ending it all and thoughts of self-destruction and self-harm. I want you to take a breath. Four in, eight out. Do that many times. It'll lower your panic, lower your stress, lower your anxiety, it'll get you to a calm. And then I want you to recognize your true value. You're beautiful just as you are. You're perfect just as you are. And I promise you're a thousand times greater than the worst thing you've ever done. And if you can recognize your true value in the face of your pain, you can survive it. We can let our pain defeat us, or we can let it build us from the ground up brick by brick. I choose every day to let my pain build me. I'm in three kinds of pain every day. My chronic back pain, my back pain for my skin, my, my pain for my skin disease, and the pain from the enemy I battle within. Don't let it defeat you. Hear my words, know that you matter, and know that if nobody else says it today, I love you. I want you to stay, be here tomorrow and every day after that. You know, Flora, Kevin's story is remarkable. And I love his hashtag, be here tomorrow. It's very powerful. It and is indeed. Uh, it's just a privilege that we get to hear what he has to say. He's also written a book. It's called Cracked not broken. It's a great read. And if you want to hear more about Kevin, he has his own website. It's called it's the website is the Kevin Heinstory.com. Great guy, mm -hmm. powerful message. You matter. And we want you to be here tomorrow. Exactly. And on that note, you can find us any day, tomorrow, the next day, wherever, because we're all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our podcast, Chick to Chick on YouTube, hit subscribe. And then on Mondays, they're going to let you know that there is a new Chick to Chick podcast available. Yes. And we will be back next Monday to chirp about another topic. Thank you.